Well, welcome. It is Saturday morning. Can't believe that uh, made it through another week, but we are coming uh, to the end of our our prayer week this week, and I'm delighted to be able to sit down uh, this time and talk to my good friend uh, Jay Lusted. Jay is an accomplished man by uh, by many opportunities. He's a a counsellor. He's an ambassador for Sports Chaplains of UK. He can be spotted on the television. Uh, Present, presenting pieces on on songs of praise jay you're just a really accomplished man so when we're thinking about as part of our prayer week thinking about the community of sport and thinking about the community of uh, entertainment and all that goes on who better than to be able to bridge kind of both both areas i'd love because i'm sure some people may know a little bit of your story others may not um, i'd love you just to share a bit about yourself in your own words. Yeah, well, good to see you, Adam. And uh, thanks for uh, inviting me along to, to do this today on this uh, fine Saturday morning. And I hope the sun is shining where you are, because uh, it is always sunny in North Wales, where I'm from. <laughs> ah, well, I, I'm, I'm always told, Jay, whenever I go and visit Wales, it seems to be raining, although it mainly is South Wales where I tend to, to uh, frequent. But I, 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 can, I, can I let you into a little secret, just between you and us? Pretend there's nobody else here. I'm not a fan of the sun. I prefer the rain. So well, actually, I think you're the first person I've ever met that prefers rain. In which, Jay, that, that, that brings us closer. But yeah, do, do share a bit about yourself. Yeah, no problem. Brilliant. Yeah, so as uh, Adam's mentioned, um, uh, I'm, I'm a county councillor. I'm a TV presenter, I'm an actor, um, I'm a father, I'm a, I'm a husband and all those roles as well. And, uh, and I just love life. I'm, I, I, I have, often have this phrase of, uh, I'm living the dream. And uh, people say, are you really? And I'll say, yes, I am, because I have a beautiful wife and a beautiful daughter, a lovely home. And uh, I appreciate uh, and just really give God all the glory uh, for everything that I have and, um, and have done in my life. I'm, I'm 32 years of age. I've um, accomplished a, a, a fair few missions in my life, if you like. Um, and as we all know, mission doesn't be, uh, are not always easy. Um, and so I, I give uh, thanks to God for, for uh, always being the constant in my life and um, being uh, the om omnipresent uh, as, as God is. So how long have you, have you, have you always been a Christian or when did you, when did you, when, when did you come into a relationship with God? Yeah, so um, I, I've been brought up in church. Um, we are um, a, a Pentees, if you like. We're Pentecostals. And uh, we're part of Festival Church in Chester. And I'm uh, the next-gen pastor there as well. And uh, I love that. And uh, I became, um, I guess, I, at 15 years old, I guess that was the real turning point for me. Um, when I came home from work one oh, from work from school <laughs> um, and I was going to say is this, is, is, is this a confession around child labour Jay <laughs> and uh, from school and um, uh, I'd had a pretty rough day if I'm honest um, and I came home and um, my mum just spoke life over me and it was a real turning point and uh, she just encouraged me my mum and dad have always been my uh, the greatest encouragers in my life and um, they just uh, spoke life over me and said you know Jay you have a purpose you have a reason you are uh, made in the image of Christ that you are fearfully and wonderfully made marvelous are his works which we hear, read about in Psalms and uh, do you know something in my heart just really flicked and I said yes I do have a reason I do have a purpose and I have a potential just like everybody else and uh, 15 years of age I just thought yeah God is for me, he's not against me, and he has a great plan for me, and a plan to prosper and not to harm me. That's amazing. I always am inspired whenever I get the opportunity to sit down with somebody and find out a little bit about their story and how, how whether it be through, as we've thought about this week, in, in prayer week, we've been chatting to, to our good friends at Care for the Family and, you know, talking there about sharing faith at home and how parents have nurtured faith and so i'm always encouraged when i hear kind of people who are kind of living out what god's called them because of the way in which their family have yeah. supported them i want to kind of turn to 
why it, it's a clumsier phrase so i apologize jay for the clumsy phrase but that kind of elephant in the room you are also uh you, you've also got a disability as well um yeah yeah I'm, i mean i was born with a rare condition called diastrophic dysplasia which is a rare form of dwarfism uh standing at three foot seven tall and that's that's kind of the brand i i use so I, my website's three foot seven dot co dot uk um I'll good plug there good plug well. <laughs> and uh yes yeah, so um so that's that's who i am um but uh I, I never you know take that you know for granted because in you know i wouldn't have uh, had the opportunities that i've had if i wasn't the way i was i don't believe um i mean you, you can see just in the in the in the side of the screen here that my olympic torch um i had the honor and the blessing of being nominated by my best mate um in 2012 and i don't believe if i was six foot average person um i wouldn't have had that opportunity and and i thank god for those opportunities too i was going to ask you because as I say, today we're thinking and praying around the whole area of sport and entertainment. And I was going to ask you, has your, your disability opened doors for you? Absolutely. Uh, I mean, like I touched on there, you know, I definitely wouldn't have had the opportunities that I've had. Um, and certainly some doors wouldn't have opened um, if I wasn't the way I was. And, uh, and I've just... Uh, grasped hold of my condition with two hands and uh, taken it and used it for positive things um, and that's why I have the um, the privilege of, of all the roles that I have um, and yeah I mean <clears throat> I know, you know, God has, uses us all in different ways and God uses us in mysterious ways as well. And uh, I had the privilege of uh, uh, studying Bible College in uh, Hillsong International Leadership College in Australia. And um, I just wanted to, God to use me um, for his glory, to build his kingdom. Um, and yes, of course, I've had the challenges of where I thought, ah, oh, Actually, when I was uh, a young teenager in my school years, I wanted to be a jumbo jet pilot. Um, at three foot seven, that's never going to work. Um, you know, we're no. all the buttons in the cockpit and stuff like that. But I've taken it to my advantage and gone for other things. So every year for the last 12, well, 15 years, I've done Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Uh, I know it's a bit uh, typecast, but I play one of the dwarfs in the pantos. Um, but who's to say, why can't I play Prince Charming one year or the genie or something in another panto or, you know, and, and that's the point of me being a counselor is just trying to break those barriers down um, and have a voice within the political world and in the national world of um, actually we are human beings just like everybody else and that we have a chance and our voice should be valued just like you and I. I was going to ask you when you do become Prince Charming in one of the Panthers, will you be able to get me complimentary tickets, be a friend and all that? Well you never know, who knows, depends where I am. <laughs> oh, I, the, 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 the answer should have been, uh, should have been yes Jay. When thinking, <laughs> when thinking about this prayer week and thinking about uh, kind of this theme on this Saturday as we think about the world of sport and entertainment, one of the things that came from those of us who've been planning and working upon this is we can't doubt that Jay, you've got lots of roles. I know you're not in before I've even said what you're going to say, but uh, you've got you know you've got lots of roles: uh, acting, TV presenting, being an ambassador for sport, to, talking into uh, issues around uh, disability and in a, as a counsellor and so on. Um, do you find that it's easy to be a Christian in those spheres? You know, sometimes there's a, there's a perception sometimes that, you know, to be out in the kind of spotlight, um, it, 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 it's, it's not easy. Do you find that? That's right, um, Adam. You, you're so right there. I mean, because it's so easy to get sucked in, um, especially in the um, showbiz world, if you like, um, and uh, in the theatre world and the arts and stuff like that, and uh, to follow the crowd. Um, I mean, uh, there's experiences where I've um, met, uh, people where they've asked, "Oh, Jay, why, why are you, uh, why are you so happy? You're so positive." I was like, "Because I've, I've got a relationship with Jesus, um, and, uh, and I would quite happily and confidently say that." Um, and and then I've also come across um, other other work and colleagues where we've sat in a rehearsal room or something, and they've come across and said, "There's something different about you. 
do you know Jesus? And, uh, and I go, yes, I do. And it's like we've recognized that we, we're in a relationship and we're, we're born again ourselves. And that's happened. But actually, there's a real movement, I believe, happening within um, the, 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 the acting world, the TV world at the moment uh, with Christians within in that business. And, and again, within sport as well, as a sportsman, um, and I don't play anymore, but I used to be um, a badminton player and I competed nationally and internationally. And, um, you know, when you're in the heat of the moment of competing, human nature sometimes kicks in and you want to slam your racket on the floor and the anger comes and stuff like that. But we are human. We have to remember that we are human as well sometimes. And, that, um, you know, God is always with us, though. And, um, and it's important that we continue to try and uh, be the best uh, witness in every situation that we're in. I love just the attitude, just what you say. You, you, you acknowledge in what you've just said that God is doing something uh, at the moment. You know, your, your work, um, again, there's lots of ways that connects uh, you and I, Jay. Let's be open and honest to, to those that are watching. But, you know, the, the, the stuff that uh, you're seeing through the, the, your ambassador of Sports Chaplains of UK and the sense at which, you know, never has there been a greater openness um, right. to the gospel and that sense of which it's about the the attitude and what people are are, are carrying you know our, our, our good friend uh, warren evans talks about you know at the moment sport is one of the most decimated communities but actually this is a time where there is an opportunity and so as an ambassador for an organization like sports chaplains in uk um i'm sure your message would be about trying to encourage Christians to think about kind of the doors and the openness and the opportunity that there is there at the moment. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, we're all experiencing quite a um, unprecedented times at the moment with the pandemic of the coronavirus and stuff like that. And, um, you know, it's an, this, this opens opportunity for us to begin conversations and that we have a hope in Jesus um, and that we can look to him in every situation and all of our circumstances. Um, but it definitely in the world of sport, um, I would encourage, especially when you're on the field or on the pitch or on the court or in the ring or wherever, you know, it's a, it's a great opportunity to just share your faith, you know, because your, 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 your physical, your mental health well-being is, is so important, but actually your spiritual well-being needs to be uh, above that as well. Um, and, uh, you know, that's so important to keep your spiritual well-being so that then can support your mental and your physical well-being. Um, and it's important to have almost have the, the sporting holy trinity, if you like, the spiritual well-being, your health, uh, mental health, well-being and your 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 physical well-being and that's i i would look at that as your 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 sporting holy trinity within within christians in sport too i was gonna i was gonna say it, it's interesting do you see um kind of through 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 your work that there is a greater awareness at the moment for people wanting to kind of bring that holy trinity as you call it back together I think there is, you know, because I think because of the, the, the struggles that people have been facing this last six, seven months um, during the pandemic, people are starting to search a lot more. People have got a lot more time on their hands and they're at home, they're reading books, they're watching YouTube, they're watching different things on, on social media, etc. And just finding times to, to search for things. Um, and I think that's what's happening. I mean, church online at the moment, how easy is it to just to click a button and you're in church um, and and you know and I think people in this day and age they just want things instantly um, and 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 I think people are finding that they they're searching for things but they're actually finding things on by clicking on links going to church and that the church is growing uh, in that sense um, so it's definitely a, a great opportunity at the moment. I was doing a radio interview uh, recently um, on one of the BBC local radio stations, and we were talking about uh, some research that had come out uh, recently that suggests that the, the, the social fabric of society is on the decline. You know, yeah. people are, are less and less connected. Uh, and I shared with the, the presenter that asked me, I said, you know, maybe there are more people who are logging online. That's what this pandemic 
has 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 shown you know people can can interface differently and uh, the presenter went well you know are, are christians being a bit lazy uh, when it comes to that church now because of the fact that you can go to church in your pajamas now in a way you couldn't do if you had to be out of the house and be at church for for 10 30 but also as we've journeyed through this prayer week i've heard some amazing stories of people who are saying it's because of the fact that now faith is so accessible yeah. i can with one click of a button uh, go uh, to church online do you think that's what's causing people who may be in the sporting world maybe in the world of entertainment who couldn't do it because work commitments didn't allow family commitments didn't allow circumstantial commitments didn't allow that now is enabling people to kind of get to that sense where they're able to explore that god-shaped hole that is within absolutely absolutely and um i i loved it because um you could just you, you can get, be at church anyway. You can be at church in the dressing room. You know, you can be at church in the theatre wings, you know, um, and stuff like that. And, and certainly I know uh, from experience that once um, uh, a show is in place or rehearsals, you are in and out of that theatre for 24-7 for could be six, seven, eight weeks without going to a physical church building. Um, and, and that could be quite hard. I missed going to the physical church. However, knowing the fact that we've got online church now that's been set up and church have invested in making it look good and make it real and relevant to today. Um, I just love that. We're, we're, we certainly are looking to continue online church even when uh, we are able to gather again in, in, in mass numbers. I want to just go back to that. That, that. That's 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 the world. Of, that's the world of sport. But you talked just a few minutes ago in our conversation about kind of the doors that God is opening up in the entertainment world. Mm. Just yeah. share, a bit, share a bit more about that. What kind of things are you seeing that God is doing? Because again, from somebody that doesn't live in that world, and for those of us who are watching this today, we don't live in that world. So what's God doing? Yeah, well, I think I'm a real testament to that one at the t at the moment, to be honest, Adam. Um, I never saw myself being a, a presenter for Songs of Praise, BBC Songs of Praise. Um, and, um, and and that really has, has, has been a real blessing to me because, uh, if I'm honest, I didn't go searching for it. Um, I was contacted by a team and, um, and that door was open to me and, and that door came to me. Um, and I think that's an amazing thing. And another thing is that from experience of being on television um, in the documentaries that we've done as a family, um, and we've done a number of them for BBC Wales and BBC One Across Network, uh, that no one, none of the producers have ever stopped us sharing our faith. Um, and that was almost a, one of the agreements that we wanted if we, when we ever we did any TV programmes was that we, we you know, church is a huge part of our life. Our, our faith is our, our huge part of our life. And this is who we are. So we're not going to hold back if you ask us a question, etc. Because we'll always direct it if, if our faith has helped us. And that's what we've done. And I think that's the good thing is that, you know, people are starting to realize that um, people's faiths are, 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 are who they are. Uh, and not just a part of who they are, you know, and, um, you know, it's, 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 it's who we are. And I think there's doors now, like you, you mentioned there, and that's there, was that they're, they're being open because it's who we are. We're human and people are starting to respect it a little bit more. Um, and then there are other sides of things that are not so easy um, and you sort of have to balance it and, and challenge it. Um, but, I think these days, and, and people are searching a lot more because of what's going on in the world, and they're asking more questions, and they're interested a lot more as well. And I pray that these doors will continue to come um, in, in the entertainment industry, in, um, in the sports industry, uh, that these doors will open uh, for us to, to, to make um, the love of Christ known everywhere that we go. Do you think that sometimes... Christians are the problem and what I mean by that is that you know maybe God is opening God is opening up those doors that you talk about but actually it's because of our lack of confidence that stops us as Christians responding to what what what, what the doors that God is ultimately opening you know I, I, I know sometimes Christians like to say I was the one that bashed that door down and actually you say no you're not 
It was God that opened that door. Maybe there's therefore a, a, a confidence thing. Because just, just, just share a bit more in terms of, you know, you, you talk about having been done the documentaries for BBC Wales and that kind of thing. And you said, you know, I, you know, I, if, if we, we're going to talk about our faith, you know, do you think sometimes uh, the, 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 there are doors that we perceive that, are, that actually aren't? Yeah, I think we do. And I think that becomes with um, human nature, to be honest, Adam. Um, I think, you know, we, we do see opportunities and sometimes we don't take that step of faith of actually, maybe this is what um, God wants me to do. But then also your human nature could sometimes take over and say, actually, I don't really want to do that. And you're, ba you're, you're challenging with God there. You're, you're fighting with God. And actually, it's the door that's perfect for you. And God is going to bless you massively when you walk through that door. But again, it's a confidence thing to take that step, take that step of faith. Um, and we all need to live in our faith zones. Uh, because we should always live comfortably uncomfortable because you don't know what's around the corner because God is, uh, it, it will always, I believe God will put us through challenging times so that we become better followers of him and that we can become more confident in him to to share and be bold and, and have that courage to share his love and his, his you know, his, um, you know, his, his, the relationship that you have with him. And I, I want to share that. And, um, you know, the, 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 all the challenges that we go through, we always learn and grow. We learn from, from our mistakes. We, we grow and we learn from when we're, we're, we're in good situations. But God will always open doors and it's never going to be an easy ride. Who said in the Bible, where does it say that it's going to be a straight and narrow path and we're going to go straight? No problem at all. Nowhere have I ever seen that. And, uh, and I believe that all the challenges that I've faced, and probably you as well, and anyone that's watching today, that the challenges that you've faced, remember that you wouldn't be who you are today without those challenges. I, I just want to kind of say yes and amen and amen and, you know, kind of some kind of uh, altar call that I, uh, that I feel. But I, I, love, I love your passion, Jane. I think there is something in there through all, of the, the, through all the bits of material that we've put out this prayer week, you are the only person that's articulated it as passionately as that about sometimes that sometimes, you know, the stuff that God enables us to go through is the stuff that God wants to use to come on to, yeah. to, 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 to shape us. And I think for, for many of us, if we're really truthful and honest, both as individuals, but also in terms of what we see going on around us, that sentiment, you know, this is the last uh, conversation that's going to take place um, in this prayer week. So, Jay, you've been uh, the last person to, to end this off. So I'm going to have some other reflections as well. Um, but that sense of which, you know, the stuff that's going on, we just need to be faithful with. Absolutely. And put all of our trust in him. You know, we just need to be faithful. We need to trust him and fix our eyes upon him. And I think that's probably true for all of the areas. You know, you talk uh, passionately about what's going on in sport. You talk passionately about what's going on in entertainment. But actually, I think that's what goes on in all of the spheres that we've been praying into this week, whether it be government or family or the church or, you know, business or whatever it is that we've, we've looked at this week. There's that sense at which we need to be uh, passionate and we need to be faithful and the sense of which you know we started the, the premise for this prayer week on the sense that maybe it, the world is getting darker and the world is getting darker but actually what does Christ call us to be he calls us to be salt and I feel like I'm getting on to my own uh, preaching now what do you do when you get two uh, preachers in a room uh, Jay you try to, to out preach each other but that sense at which God is calling us to 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 be faithful and actually at this time in this moment God is calling us to to stand up and to be faithful to yeah. be the people that God has has called us to be I'd love just as we come into land because again we could talk for hours Jay and uh, yeah. we, we we we've got other things that are going on uh, today in both of our lives but uh, I just want to just ask you what are the things that as we think about the community of sport as we think about uh, the community of entertainment what are the things that you think um, we should be praying into 
we should be praying into community into community sports um i mean uh, there's it's great that we have so many um events and stuff like that and uh, you know the the premier league football rugby union six nations all these big uh, uh, um, events and i think we always should hold those up in prayer and all of our chaplains in these professional and elite um sports and stuff like that but we should also remember those community sport clubs um and uh, you know just really uh, use our opportunities to pray for them um, and, and really set the grassroots and, and target the grassroots so that then they can go up into the elite athletes, um, you know, into the elite professional governing bodies um, to really um, just have an impact on, on, on the, on the, uh, from the grassroots and uh, up to the top. And uh, if we, I think we, if we do that, we can change the culture and bring, um, you know, we, I really want to pray for that, to be honest. I think one of the things that uh, our good friend Warren Evans says is the fact that, you know, the community of sport is 30 million people, men, women and children. And quite yeah. often when we look at the community, when we look at sport, we see it as an activity, yeah. not as a community. And therefore, when we pray with God's eyes, we need to pray for the stuff that goes on in the Premier League, in the elite sports, but actually it's that grassroots stuff. And I love the fact that uh, Pastor Warren says, you know, the simple prayer that we should pray around the community of sport is, Lord, wherever you're at work, can I join in? Jay, yeah. I'd love us if you just lead us in a prayer. Yeah, uh, just, absolutely. Just, just for that area, and then we'll do one for, for entertainment. But, uh, you know, I'd love you just to lead us in prayer for that, that would actually we would have our eyes open to see sport as a community, not as an activity. Yeah. Yeah, Father, we just, uh, we thank you that you are for us, Lord, and that you uh, have made us who we are, God. And I pray that we, those that are, are involved in, in clubs and communities, uh, Lord, I pray that you'll use them for your glory, Lord, and that we'll just uh, see um, all these clubs as a community where we can come together and, and maybe just have fun and play our sports and compete, Lord, but actually that we can share our faith and that actually that we can build community around you and not just see it as an activity uh, because it's important that we uh, we focus on uh, on the community level to build relationships so that we can build our relationship with you god and i pray that for nationally right across the united kingdom lord that you will use those christians and new christians lord to to, to, to build this community in jesus name amen amen and then just for the kind of entertainment piece again that god would continue to keep opening yeah. The doors for, for Christians that are in those uh, spheres, for those that are struggling with their faith and yeah. struggling to stand. Again, Jay, I'd love you just to, to lead us in prayer. Yeah, God, we just thank you that you are our provider. Lord, I thank you that you are um, right in the heart of everything that we do, God. And I pray uh, that you will just bless us, especially those that are in the arts and the entertainment industry right now, God, because, you know, work is thin and uh, Lord, theatres are closing, uh, things are happening and, and things are not great in the arts, Lord. But I pray that you will have a divine intervention in those that are involved in arts and the and theater and tv god and pray lord that you will open doors like never before and that you will just release a newness upon everyone in jesus name amen amen and jay i just want to pray as i say for those that have missed the introduction to this then go back and watch our conversation again jay you speak with passion and i love it um, but you, you are a, a, a counselor you're an ambassador for sports chaplaincy uk you are on the television, you're an actor, you're all those things. Um, what can we pray for you? And I, I want to close by praying yeah. for you and for your family. What can we pray for you at this time? Yeah, well, pray for my family, you know, and uh, pray for for the uh, for work to come through and uh, uh, for myself. Um, in fact, uh, you can probably hear uh, the family, they've just walked through the door and Olivia's about to come and say hello to everyone. <laughs> and um, yeah, so say hello to, come and say hello to everyone in Sports Chaplaincy. Say hello. Excellent. Good stuff. So yeah, pray for the family, pray for us and uh, pray for work in, in our, uh, in the arts industry. That'd be great. 
Fab. Let's just let me let me just pray for you, uh, Jay, and then and then we'll we'll call oh. an end. Hello, oh. Olivia. I was just, uh, always a joy to be interrupted <laughs> by, 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 a, by a young child. I love it. Um, but let's just pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for uh, we thank you for Jay. We thank you for his family. We thank you for his passion. And, and the passion of the family, Lord, in order to be salt and light in all the spheres that you place them. Lord, I thank you that uh, we've been encouraged this morning uh, just to hear again about the, the amazing things that you're doing in the community of sport, that you're doing in the uh, entertainment industry. Lord, we thank you that you are at work. And Lord, we just pray that you'll continue to bless Jay and his wife and the family in all that they seek to do for you. We pray this in your holy name. Amen. Jay, Amen. thank you. Jay, that, that, is, that is the end of our time. I'll allow you to go. I, I, was, I, I, I was a bit arrogant then. I said, I'm about to allow you to go back to your family. <laughs> um, but thank you. Thank you so much indeed for spending the time uh, with me no today for this prayer week. And may God bless you. And I look forward to chatting to you again uh, before not too long. Yeah. God bless everyone. God bless. Take care. Bye -bye. Thanks, Adam. Bye-bye.